Cool. Hi, I'm Sam McCarran, uh, for those of you who don't know me yet. Um, and I'm doing my PhD at UCT at the moment on the floral evolution of long-tubed ericas. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about flower orientation as a reproductive area, uh, barrier. <laughs> and I've been working on that uh, together with Anina, but also with uh, Steve Johnson, Genevieve Theron, Ross Turner, and Jeremy Midgley. So yeah, we all know that Erica has undergone this amazing radiation here. Um, and um, I was, my last information was 700 species. You, on your slide, it said even more. <laughs> I said tax. So. Oh, okay, said okay, tax, okay. So, okay. But, I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, for all those species to coexist, there need to be reproductive barriers. And one of them can be that they have disjunct geographical distributions. So they just never meet each other. They can have different flowering times and they can also have different pollinators and that would uh, be reflected in different corolla lengths, different scent, as Timo has told us, um, different colors as in Anina's work and then um, possibly also different orientation. And I have been very interested in long proboscid flies, or LPFs for short. And um, as you can see, uh, they have really incredibly long uh, proboscides, um, longer than their actual bodies. And there are two families, the Nemus trinidae and the Tabanidae. And the, the flowers pollinated by them um, conform to a sort of syndrome. Um, where most of them are appear to us humans at least unscented, and the ericas are typically um, have a long constricted corolla with those flaring lobes at the end, and they are light pink in color with a reflection in the UV range as well. And I was looking specifically at um, those two species, Erica shannonia and Erica ampulacea. And according to the phylogeny, they are sister species. They both conform to the uh, long proboscid fly syndrome, which means they are unscented, they have long constricted corollas, they have the flaring lobes, they're pink with reflection in the UV range. They also co occur in the Klein Revere Mountains and they overlap in flowering time. I have literally seen individuals of the two species flowering right next to each other. So where's the barrier between them? Um, and uh, looking at the species more closely, Erica shannonia flowers from October till December. It has a corolla length of 28 millimeters on average, and it's horizontal in orientation. And then when we look at Erica ampulacea, it has a slightly longer flowering time from the end of June till December. The flowers are only 19 millimeters long and it's vertical in orientation. So I first did hand pollination experiments with them where I confirmed that both species cannot self and they rely on a pollinator for um, seed production. Um, and then for Erica Shannonia, a lot of observation, Ross Turner as well. And on the last, last day, <laughs> when I was ready to give up, I finally uh, observed a fly, a Phyllolite rostrata visiting it. And uh, this is a fly from the family of the Tabanidae. And then for Erica Ampulacea, I observed that it is pollinated by Prusica vestamani which belongs to the Nemes Trinidae. So um, let's have a look at those two fly families. The, um, the Tabanidae uh, at the top there, they have um, fixed forward pointing uh, a fixed forward pointing proboscis. So this one is resting and you can see the proboscis stays in that position. And then the Nemus trinidae at the bottom, 
they uh, can swivel their proboscis and when they're resting, they also rest their proboscis underneath their body. And here you can see uh, the mechanism how they, they swivel their proboscis. So um, when we look at our two pollinators, Phyllolycia rostrata, um, a tabanid has a fixed forward pointing proboscis and um, it's 23 millimeters long. And then Prusica vestamani uh, has the swiveling proboscis as an amistrinid and the proboscis is also shorter. I measured it to be 11 millimeters. So um, looking at phylo uh, Yes, looking at Phyllolycae rostrata, um, the proboscis with 23 millimeters is long enough to access both ericas, but since the proboscis can't swivel, it can only visit horizontal flowers, so it can only visit Erica shenonia. And then for the Prusica vestamani, it can swivel its proboscis both in a vertical and a horizontal position, but the proboscis is too short for Erica Shonania because it's only 11 millimeters, so it can only visit Erica Ampulacea. So um, what we see in those two species is that we um, there is re reproductive isolation as a result of a combination of both corolla length and orientation, and they probably diverged as a result of this different biomechanics of their pollinators, and the, the biomechanics are still facilitating their coexistence nowadays. And um, this got me thinking, what about all the other long, long proboscid fly pollinated species? Um, so I went and did a um, literature survey and uh, compiled data on 156 long proboscid fly pollinated species, not just ericas. And I compared um, the flower angles of them to um, being pollinated by tabanids or nemistrinids. And <clears throat> what I found is that uh, tabanid flowers and nemistrinid flowers do differ in, uh, in their orientation. So the tabanids had a median angle of 90 degrees, so completely horizontal, and the nemistrinid flowers had an um, angle of 45 degree, po like, um, pointing upwards slightly. Um, the nemestrinid flowers also had a larger spread of their angles, um, ranging from zero to uh, till 130, with zero being vertical. And you can see the tabanets, they only range from 45 to 110. And um, the nemestrinid flowers also had a bimodal distribution with modes at 34 and 90 degrees. And this indicates that there might be two different strategies. Um, if a flower is horizontal, it can make use of both tabanids and nemestrinids as pollinators. But if it is vertical, then um, that means it is specialized for only nemestrinids with their sw swiveling proboscis. Um, but being vertical also could incur some costs. Um, the flowers could uh, get flooded with rainwater, which dilutes the nectar and washes away the pollen. And it could reduce the pollination accuracy, especially if the flowers are bilateral symmetrical. So to offset those costs, um, they might have evolved um, like narrow entrances um, so that the rainwater can't enter into the tube and radial symmetry and nectar guides. Um, I also um, did a pair T test comparing 11, um, plant, uh, 11 of the plant genera where um, I had species pollinated by both uh, tabanids and nemestrinids. And um, there I found that it, within the same genus, the nemestrinid flowers had on average an angle 20 degrees closer to vertical than the tabanids. And then I also did a phylogenetic ANOVA with 79 of the species, where I found that flower angle is still related to the fly family, uh, even when controlling for phylogenetic signal. So in conclusion, it means um, flower orientation does reflect pollinator biomechanics, 
and it can work as a mechanism for reproductive isolation. It's on you, Kirsten. I know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but it is pollinated by long time flies. <laughs> yeah, Timo. So, do you consider manipulating the angle? And yes. Species yes, I would love to. Give me a postdoc, please. Do you know whether they're cross compatible? Unfortunately, there are very few flowers, so I couldn't actually do those experiments. Yeah. Yes, Rupert? I'm just checking on the papers that these two bars of ampulaceae. Yes. Which one is that? Uh, this is the ampulaceae, ampulaceae, yeah. Um, but uh, Shannonia is like data deficient, yes. but I think it is like rather not that common. I think yeah. I only know of two locations, and the one location where I've been working, uh, the felt is very old. I think it's burned last like 23 years ago. Oh. And like over the last years, while I've been working on the, them, um, every year there's been less flowers. Um, so yeah, actually last year I only saw one plant and flower. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one point on iron ash. Yeah. Yes. I would doubt that this is driving speciation, so then it's diversions. But I would agree that this keeps the gene pool separate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I would, I would really guess you need something else like geographic isolation yeah. or whatever, just a genomic, yeah. dynamic thing or so. Yeah. You need to diverge these literatures. But then um, to keep the gene pool separated, this is really yes. true. Yeah, so. so it's just a, Hypothesis, yeah. yeah. Repeat the comment. Pardon? Repeat the comment. Oh, sorry. Um, yes. Um, sorry. What's your name again? Nikolai. Nikolai was saying um, that uh, he doubts uh, it is uh, a mechanism that leads to divergence, but that it um, might be uh, a mechanism that keeps the, them separate. Does that? Well, are you are you specifically suggesting that it's unlikely that this is driving divergence in symmetry? Yeah, for example. I mean, how, how should this, while developing these different elements, which is a steady process, how should this interrupt you flow? Know, like, I can't imagine it's going to create that. No, no. Uh, something else that comes adds to it. I, I, could, I could imagine that it could happen in symmetry, symmetry actually, because um, so those Erika's. Uh, while the flowers develop, they are always upright. Mm -hmm. And then for Shannonia and some other of those um, long proboscis fly pollinated ericas, they drop as they mature to the side. So if they stop, like if if they if they if there's one big population and there's like several flies that can visit them, uh, Nemestrinids and Tabernids, and then there's like a subpopulation where they stop dropping their flowers, then only one of the flies can continue. Right. Visiting and then there's like there's an additional thing maybe which I think of like you need a I don't know a genomic rearrangement whatever yeah to make suddenly the flower uh, angle yes. of yeah. like yeah and then it can keep these these yeah gene pool separated yeah that's, that's possible yeah right? so, um I mean that's that's I think we have here a system where if we had enough data integrated we could go for answering these questions. So no more questions, I also have more slides. <laughs>